This is Steve from the Dice Club in Nottingham, and today I'm going to show you how to play a game called Blueprints, which plays between two to four players and takes about half an hour. This is a game of Blueprints set up for three players. You've got the yellow player, the red player, and the blue player, and each player has this little nifty screen which shows you what the dice are worth on the back, and behind the screen you're going to be building a building using some of the dice that are in play. Um, I'm just going to move some of this out of the way, but these are what's going to score you the points at the end of the round. And what you're going to do, you're going to be building three buildings over the game, and each building you build at the end of the round, you're going to compare it to other people's, and you're then going to try and score some of these cards, which are worth different numbers of victory points. The first thing each player is going to do on their turn is to take a blueprint itself. So blueprints look something like this. Uh, they have a 3D image of what the building will look like, as well as a plan view, and it tells you in the plan view how high each pile needs to be. So here I need a 1, a 1, a 1, and I need 3 in this stack here. Um, the greyed out bits, or the blanked out bits, you're not allowed to build on, but you are allowed to deviate from the actual building you're trying to build. It will score you fewer points um, for the value of your building, but it might get you some of those bonus cards. And as you can see, some of the other buildings, if I just show you a few of them, look something like this, and they all need six dice to complete. Let's say the one we drew was this one, and I'll show you how I turn plays. So on your turn, you're going to have your blueprint behind your shield. Uh, for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm going to remove the shield, but on the inside of the shield is a list of how all the dice score. So it is useful to you as you're building it to show you which dice will be more valuable towards the value of your building. To start each round, there are going to be some dice in the middle to take. So there's going to be in a three-player game, there are going to be eight dice, and the number of dice depend on how many players there are. And someone's going to roll, and the start player's going to roll these dice. Um, and you can see here that I've got one, two, three in black, three, five in orange, a five in green, and a five or a six in white. So on my turn, I'm going to take one of these dice and I'm going to add it to my blueprint um, in such a way that it doesn't violate any of the building rules. So I might decide to take this black two and put it there. It's not actually that good a choice because you can want the blacks in different places, but just for the exam just for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to put it there. The next person's go, so say it's yellow's turn next. Yellow will take one more dice from the bag, they would roll it and add it. So whenever you're going, there's always at least eight there. However, the first seven dice that were remaining at the start of Yell's Go stay there. So you're only really adding one dice different each time. Yellow will take a dice, blue will take a dice, and so on, until you've built a building of six dice. The rules for building are as follows. You're not allowed to build on the blanked out bits, but you're allowed to build on any stack here as, um, with any colours you want. There's no... Um, differences in the colours as to what's allowed and what's not. The colours just score in different ways. So I could put um, that one there, I could put that one there, and so on. The only other rule for building is if I want to build on top of an existing cube, I need to place, in this case, I need to place a value of 1 or higher. So I could build, on that one, I could put uh, a clear 5 on there. Okay, I'm allowed to do that because 5 is bigger than 1. The next turn, I can put an orange 5 on that one. Again, because 5 is 5 or larger, I'm allowed to do that. And on top of that, I could put a 6, and so on. So that's another way. Now I have a finished building. It doesn't match the actual proposed plans, but it's valid in terms of how I've constructed it. Um, I'm just going to show you how the dice score. Once everyone has finished building their building, they're going to score it. The first thing that's going to happen, you've got a score track here, where each person's going to put their disc on and start scoring the value of the building. These are not victory points, these just says how good a building you have, and the person with the best building is going to get some points and so on, second and third and whatnot. So sorry, um, I'm scoring this building here. First thing I'll do, I'll check if it matches the building's plans. Well, my building is not the same as the one I was intending to build, so I'd get nothing. If it did, I would get six uh, points on the building jack. The other th next thing I would do, I'd score the different colours of dice. So what happens is, and you get, you, get, you get this on the back of your shield, you'd score orange dice, green dice, black dice and white dice differently. The orange dice score two points for every dice they're adjacent to. So if I look at my plan here, this orange dice at the bottom is adjacent to three, so that would get me six points. This is adjacent to one, so that would get me two. So orange dice would score me eight, 
and I would move my counter 8 points on the value of the building track. Next thing I'd do is i count how many green dice I had. Now green dice score you points based on how many you've got. If I have one green dice I score two, all the way up to if I have all six green dice I would score 30 points. That's quite a high score. So as you can see on my particular building I have one green dice which would score me two. So I'm now up to ten. The black cubes score points based on how high they are up in your building structure. I have two black cubes, and the black cubes on the ground floor are worth two, the black cubes on the first floor are worth three. So this one's worth two, this one's worth three, but if I get to the fourth floor or higher, they're worth eight each. So again, I, I say I've just put these out in a random order, and I haven't actually scored quite very well here. So black, I would get two for the bottom one, three for that one, I would get five. The white dice are probably the easiest to score, the white dice just score for face value. So I have one white dice, a score of one, um, so the, uh, I would score one point. Um, white sixes go quite quickly because they're six instant points. It's quite hard to get six points from some of the other dice very easily. So white, big, big white numbers often go as soon as they're rolled. Uh, you'd score your points and let's say that uh, yellow and blue scored as well. Yellow might score 19, blue might score 22. As I say, I haven't scored very well here. And then you would reward people on the score track based on how well they've done. So the next thing you do once you've scored the value of your building is you're going to award points for someone who's got the best building. The best building in this case is blue. They would score three points. And the three of each of these cards, one card can be won each round. In a four-player game, you play with all three of these. In a three-player game, you wouldn't play with the ones, the bronze awards. And in a two-player game, you wouldn't play with the bronze or the gold. So the winner would get two, second place would get nothing. In this particular case, we're not going to play with these. And blue would get three points. And uh, yellow would get two. And our awful building that we built there would score as no victory points. There are other ways to score victory points, and these come with the bonus cards. There are four types of bonuses you can get each round in Blueprints, um, and these are listed by these here. Only one person can win each one each round, and if there's a tie, I'll show you what the tiebreaker is in just one moment. Um, but there are four ways to get bonus points. You can get bonus points if you have... Um, this says if I have four dice or more with the same value on it, whoever's got that might take two points. If I've used five dice or more of the same colour, I get two points. If I've got a stack of five or higher, so like a tower of five or higher, that gets me two points. Or if I have the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six in my building, I would get two points. It is possible for you to get two of these. It is possible for you to get three of these, but I've not seen it happen yet. It is not possible to get all four because these two contradict each other. Um, you'd score those, and sometimes people will not fulfil all of them, so say no one might have built a high tower, no one would get that, but there'd be one of these available to win at the end of each round. The tiebreaker works as follows. You can see here there's spaces for two dice here. What would happen here, at the start of the game, you would put two dice at random here, they have to be different colours, and whoever, if there's a tie, whoever's got the most orange dice would break the tie in their favour, and if that's a tie, whoever's got the most green dice would break the tie in that favour. If that's a tie, whoever went last gets, uh, gets to win the tie. And that is the game of blueprints. You play over three rounds, and you count on your victory points that you've earned through the cards that you've gained during the game, to add them up and see who's won. This has been Steve from the Dice Cup in Nottingham. Thank you very much.